Hey, what's up? This is Trent. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about all this stuff right here. So about four months ago, I unfortunately had most of my belongings stolen uh, from my car while I was on a trip. And some of those things that got lost were five different racing drones. And so I lost my whole kit, my Fat Sharks, my Tyrannus, uh, and all the quads. So that's a bummer, but that means that I have some new things. And so the first thing that I wanted to do was upgrade my controller. So since I did not have a controller, well, I take that back, actually. I had one of these in the car and uh, the thieves decided not to take it for some reason. So I had a controller. So I've been using this uh, for the last four months and it's small, it's awesome. I'll probably still use this for uh, different quads, probably some little micro quads. I think it's a fun mobile rig, but it's not super serious to me. And the thing that I didn't like about it is that the throws were a little too short on the gimbals. So looking more into FR Sky and what they've been doing recently um, with closing off their protocols. So I wanted to support someone else for my controller. I thought about doing the DJI controller and in the experience that I've had with the DJI system, the video when you're at range or going through obstacles, the video gets kind of glitchy, but it's a problem when your control locks up. Let's jump into uh, when I was flying with Mike Bishop and using the DJI system for the first time and here's some of my first thoughts. So I just used the DJI goggles for the first time and I really enjoyed it. Uh, you could see a lot, the breakup's really interesting. Um, let's see, what else? The sides of the video um, are like pixelated. That kind of makes sense. You just want to focus on what's, this, what's in the center. So that's freeing up bandwidth, that's really cool. I also really liked, uh, I like the controller a lot. It's really fun. So you can tell I really like the controller. I really like the feel of the controller, but something about having the video and control on the same link uh, bothers me. And so I decided to get this. This is the Jumper T16. Um, this is my favorite radio I've ever had. Um, and I say that because it's exactly like the radios that I've had in the past. So it runs OpenTX. Uh, it's got this big color screen um, and it takes the Crossfire module on the back. And that's also something that's new. I had the Crossfire Micro in the past uh, and I decided to go for the full size version uh, so that I had higher power outputs so that when I want to start flying super long range, I'll have the ability to do so without worrying on 100 milliwatts on the micro unit. Uh, I've actually had a lot of fun too uh, with customizing the T16. If I power it on, you'll hear sick of hearing the open TX and I put my face on there as well. And used a couple custom sounds uh, from sound packs that I found online. I think the throttle stick was uh, a FPV show audio file and the switches. Don't forget to check your switches. <laughs> so I had a little bit of fun when I got this controller, uh, customizing it. I didn't want it to be like every other OpenTX transmitter. I wanted to have something that was a little bit custom and, uh, and it has my face on the startup screen. So if anyone tries to steal my stuff again, they'll always see my face. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I got the jumper. Apparently this radio can do any, really any protocol, control protocol for any drones, whether it's Hubsan or Spectrum or FR Sky or, um, I don't know, bunch of different kind of protocols. Uh, this thing is supposed to do it all 
right out of the box, which is super cool and much better again than the game style controller that I have been using. Uh, the drones that I currently have right now, I am flying the Shen Drone Squirt. Uh, I love this frame. I filmed a lot on this frame. And I'm flying the X Hover. Uh, this is the blaster frame from X Hover. I enjoy this frame because it has it has a lot of space. It has a lot of space on the inside. There's mounting points on the front, the back, the bottom front, and the bottom back, so that I can move the GoPro around on this rig. I've always been a fan of X Hover. Uh, I've always liked supporting Daniel. He's a great guy, and uh, he really supported me. Um, when I didn't have a drone and really helped me get back in the air. So thank you, Daniel at X Hover. You're dope. And a lot of people have. I mean, Daniel did. I've known Daniel for five years. Andy from Shen Drones uh, helped me out uh, on the frames and the 3D prints um, for the squirt. And I have a geyser and an Ichabod ready to go. But these are the two quads that I'm flying right now. And then the goggles I've been using are typical fat shark goggles um i actually got these from a friend when i lost all my stuff uh he gave me these goggles he was not using them i bought a new faceplate, a new battery and uh, some other friends came in clutch and got me the module um so i have a pair of analog 5.8 goggles the screen is burnt in on them and I'm not sure if these modules like really are the best. So, I mean, it's LaForge, but it hasn't been performing that well. Um, and I've never truly felt completely confident um, flying on analog. And that's not because like it's just analog, but that's because the quad, um, I've, I've used caps, I've used... Uh, you know, I've tried sep like getting power for the video transmitter from everywhere, and uh, I always get noise at high throttle, and so that's always uh, been a bummer, and I've always not flown super hard because of that reason. So I just picked up the DJI goggles. I haven't even opened them yet because I wanted to make this video. Um, but I've got the DJI goggles here, and I got the combo with two air units so this cost me 6.99 um and to me that is a bargain that i will participate in so i bought the dji system and since i've flew it before um i know i really like it and i know i really trust it and i think since i've flown it there's been upgrades to it that has made it more stable, made latency go down, and I don't know, many other things. Um, I also picked up the T-Motor F55 Amp Pro 2 ESC and flight controller stack. I got this because I actually don't really know what's on the inside of this blaster right now. It's all uh, liquid electrical taped, and um, that's because Daniel... Uh, kind of at X Hover, Daniel went into some of his crashed rigs or some of his backup rigs and uh, helped me out with some used components, which I'm super grateful for. But now that I'm throwing the DJI system in there, I want to have a very, very reliable and robust uh, ESC and flight controller solution. And this F7 board is one that the DJI system connects to directly. So if you got the DJI controller, you essentially put the air unit in your quad, solder up the motors to the to this ESC, connect the air unit to the flight controller, and you're done, um, which is super cool. I'm going to have to go in here and connect uh, my Crossfire receiver. Uh, but to me, that's a more solid link um, because of what I showed you filming that skateboarder. So I think that's it. I I'm gonna get to work putting the air units into the blaster frame. And uh, I'm gonna keep the squirt, a analog squirt, and I'm gonna order a second one and make a second squirt that is a DJI squirt. Um, those are my plans, this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, 
and I hope you enjoy that. I'll make a follow-up video once I open these bad boys, once I fly with them, give you my thoughts um, after using them for an extended period of time. Follow me on Instagram, a quadcopter guy, and I will see you on the next video. You know that that ride at fucking uh, California Adventure? Yeah. This is like better. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Whoa. That's a good landing. Yeah, but I gave T all my other shits just got fucked up. <laughs>